Hi, so I want to do a proof about this question, which is saying we have a context-free grammar in Chomsky normal form, and we want to show that any string in the language of that grammar takes exactly two times the length of w minus one rule applications to make that string, which is nice. If you don't have a grammar in Chomsky normal form, you can't guarantee this. So it's nice that when it's in this form, you know exactly how many rules to apply. So this is not actually correct. So this is this statement right here is true if the string w is not the empty string. But if it is the empty string, then it will take one rule. And so the statement's not true because two times zero, which is the length of the empty string at minus one is negative one, which makes no sense. So it needs to be at least one. But other than this special case, it is two times the length of w minus one. So for those of you who don't know what Chomsky normal form is, let's fill us in. So Chomsky normal form, we have three different rule types. So the, the uh, rules that were allowed are we can have the start variable making the empty string and only the start variable. We can have a single uh, variable making a single terminal, or we can have a single variable making two variables where the two variables on the right side are not the start variable. And on my channel, I've done a whole bunch of videos about Chomsky norm conversion and all this stuff. And I've mentioned this uh, fact right here that we're gonna prove here, but I haven't made a specific video on it, so that's why we're here. So I'm not really interested in like how to actually get a grammar in CNF, you could always do it. There is a conversion algorithm that always works to do it. But here, uh, we're just focused on this question. So here, this is saying not that there is a specific way to get to length, times the length of w minus 1. It's that every way to make any string in the language of the grammar takes exactly that many rule applications other than the empty string. So we can actually prove the uh, this exception right here pretty easily because if it's in Chomsky normal form, the only rule that can exist um, to generate the empty string is this one. And we can't use any of the other variables down here because they're not the start variable. So we can't like come back up here and generate the empty string. So the only way we could ever generate the empty string if it's in the language of the thing We'll take exactly one rule application starting with the start variable. So, so this one uh, is a check. We already know how to do that. So now let's suppose that the string is non-empty. So let's consider when w is non-empty. Then uh, we have two cases. So uh, what if the length of the w of the string w is exactly one? Then if it's exactly one character then we could only apply this rule right here. Because if we apply this one down here, the two variables on the right side are not the start variable. And so they must generate at least one character each. And so then we would be stuck because we would have at least two characters being generated. Oops. So we would have to apply a rule of this form where we have to have the start variable on the left side, but we can have any variable here. But it would, in this case, have to be the start variable and it makes a single terminal, and so that would imply that we get exactly one rule. So we would have S uh, generating uh, W in exactly one rule, and that's, one, and that's pretty easy to show. So now let's uh, consider when the length of W is at least two. Then we must apply uh, this, this one right here first. Um, because if we apply either of the other two first, then we're stuck because, because there are no other rules to apply once we apply this one. So that means that we started with the start variable and we uh, got BC and then we replaced uh, B with something or maybe C with something. It doesn't really matter. And then let's just say for all intents and purposes, and we'll see why this is sufficient later, for all intents and purposes, let's say that we don't generate any terminals right now. So let's say that we have a variable x1, x2, up to xn, uh, where n is the length of uh, w. So then what we can do is we can start applying 
rules of the second type right here, turning each one of these variables into the corresponding terminal in the string w that we're after. So I can maybe, for example, convert the first one to be the first character of w and leaving all the others in place. And, oops. and then we'll convert, let's say, the second one into a terminal and then we just keep going like this one at a time because we can only replace one at a time because it's a context-free grammar. And then eventually we'll get every single terminal like this. We're assuming that the string is in the language of the grammar to start with so we can actually do this. But uh, so this is certainly one way to do it. But the problem is that this, this derivation is only one possible derivation. The, because there are other ones we could choose. For example, uh, we could have replaced the x2 variable first, or we could have uh, replaced the c instead of the b over here. There are lots of different combinations that we could have done. So the question is, this particular derivation you can show takes exactly two n minus one rule applications, and we will do that in a sec. But uh, we would need to show that this is true for every derivation, not just this one. So let's, it's actually a good idea though to uh, make sure that this really is 2n minus 1, because if it isn't, then, then we're screwed. So the way to calculate this is to note that at the beginning, right here, we have exactly one variable. And each rule application, we replace this one variable with 2. So in each one of these blue rules that we applied up here, we will get an additional variable. So we get plus one vars, plus one, etc. up to, we add one more, and then we'll eventually get n. So we started with one, and then we added one over and over and over and over until we got n. And that takes n minus one uh, rule applications. So the blue rules, are going to be n minus 1 rules to get there. And then the yellow ones down here, uh, what happens here? Well, we can only replace one of the variables with the terminal at a time. And because there are n of them, it would take at least n rules to do that. And in fact, exactly n rules. So the yellow ones down here are going to be exactly n rules. And so obviously the total is 2n minus 1. So that's not hard to see. Um, so why is this true in general then, uh, not just this derivation? So here's the reasoning. So you have to be able to generate these n variables at some point of throughout the derivation. It's maybe we do them at the beginning like we do here or later, but at some point we must have all n variables generated in some way. And we must have uh, all of those n variables turned into terminals. Why must we have all n variables? Because if we have fewer of them, then that means that if we have fewer, we can only make one terminal out of each one of them. And so we can't make the string itself. So we must have n variables, maybe some of them are the same, but we have n occurrences of variables. And each one of them must be converted into a terminal at some point, maybe now, maybe later, but at some point they must all be converted. So that means that we gotta get from one variable to n at some point, and we can't mix and match the two types of rules because they're fundamentally incompatible with each other. This one converts a variable to a terminal and doesn't make any variables. This one, uh, adds one variable, but it doesn't make any terminals. So there's no way that we can mix and match them here. So these two types of rules are entirely distinct from each other. So therefore, we know now know that we must have at least n minus one rules, in fact, exactly n minus one rules to make all the variables that are needed, and n more to convert all of those variables into the corresponding terminals, assuming that the string is in the language of the grammar, of course. And that is a proof, a full proof, that if we have a grammar in Chomsky normal form, every string in the language of the grammar that's not empty will take exactly two times the length of the string minus one rule applications.
So hopefully that was interesting. Leave thoughts about Chomsky normal form into the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.